Hello and welcome back to the second installment of Endocrine Emergencies. Uh, we're going to take a little time and talk about some things that are not normally uh, in EMT class, uh, but I think that are important to know um, a little bit outside of the box. I hope you enjoy. So we're going to start off this segment talking about thyroid storm, uh, which is hyperthyroidism. We see a lot of patients with a medical history of hyperthyroidism and they're taking medications for same, but very rarely do we actually see somebody in the middle of a thyroid storm or do we recognize it. Uh, a thyroid storm is just a life-threatening condition uh, that develops in cases of untreated thyrotoxosis. So what causes a thyroid storm? Uh, well, it's usually kind of hard to say, but most of the time doctors seem to think that it is trauma uh, or infection that usually causes a uh, hyperthyroidism. And most of the time, uh, as pre-hospital providers, we're actually not going to know that they are in the midst of a thyroid storm uh, because blood tests are used to evaluate thyroid function and to determine where they are as far as their levels. But what we might see is congestive heart failure and pulmonary edema, which, if left untreated, uh, can rapidly evolve and lead to death. So some of the signs and symptoms of a thyroid storm are agitation, uh, change in alertness, uh, which is like confusion, those kind of things, uh, diarrhea and fever, tachycardia, sweating, shaking, uh, and increased systolic blood pressure. Another sign and symptom of hyperthyroidism is a goiter, uh, is where the thyroid gland and surrounding tissue swell up, as you can see on the picture of the screen. Now the picture is showing an uh, extreme example, but it does happen. Treatment is relatively low. There's not a whole lot we can do in the pre-hospital environment except to realize it um, and then transport the patient. All right, so now hypothyroidism is basically just where the thyroid gland does not make enough thyroid hormone. So there's lots of different things that can cause hypothyroidism, uh, the most common of which is just an inflammation of the thyroid gland. Uh, there are diseases out there that can cause it as well as of Graves disease and other autoimmune diseases, uh, which is basically just where the immune system attacks the thyroid itself. Uh, there's postpartum or afterbirth thyroidosis, uh, congenital defects, uh, radiation treatment, and radioactive uh, iodine that is used to treat an overactive thyroid gland uh, can also cause hypothyroidism. Uh, obviously, surgical removal of the thyroid gland and different types of viral things. Uh, there's a couple of drugs uh, like amiodarone, which is a common antiarrhythmic that can cause hypothyroidism. Some of the early signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism is uh, cold sensitivity, uh, just temperature in general irregularities, uh, constipation, depression, uh, which goes along with fatigue and the, the feeling of being slowed down. Uh, for females, uh, they have heavier menstrual periods. Uh, all people with hypothyroidism uh, have a joint or muscle pain. Uh, the skin is pale and dry. Uh, the finger and uh, fingernails and hair are brittle. Um, they have generalized weakness and unintentional weight gain. So late signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism would be a decreased taste and smell, hoarseness, slow speech, thickening of the skin and thinning of the eyebrows, and puffy face, hands, and feet um, as seen in the picture. Treatment of hypothyroidism is mostly just supportive and transport. Uh, there's not a whole else that we can do uh, pre-hospital except for trying to figure out what exactly is going on with the patient, letting them know that, and getting them to go to the hospital for further treatment. So now we're going to switch gears and talk about another endocrine gland, which is the uh, adrenal gland, uh, and talking about adrenal crisis, um, which is a life-threatening condition that occurs when there is not enough cortisol, which is a hormone produced by the adrenal glands. So signs and symptoms of adrenal crisis is weakness, uh, weight loss, abdominal pain, and one of the most commons is fatigue. Other signs and symptoms is syncopal episodes, uh, weird salt cravings, and one of the most noticeable, as you'll see in the picture, is a pigmentation change. This can happen uh, basically anywhere on the body, and oddly enough is one of the things that they say that happened to Michael Jackson. 
So there's not a whole lot that we can actually do pre-hospitally uh, as far as adrenal crisis. Uh, but there again, if you can try to figure out exactly what's going on or at least uh, assume or predict that they're having an adrenal crisis, letting the patient know that and transporting them. Uh, these signs and symptoms of this is... Uh, kind of vague, uh, but if you understand about endocrinology, uh, endocrine emergencies, you may be able to maybe figure out exactly what's going on, um, relay that to the patient, and get them further treatment. So in conclusion with endocrine emergencies, um, as you can see that they are nearly impossible to diagnose in the field. But um, a good understanding of anatomy uh, and physiology of the endocrine system and the body as a whole will help the EMT uh, decide exactly what's going on with the body or at least make a, an assumption as to what's going on uh, and be able to tell the patient that and get them to the proper treatment.